All right, Larry. Uh, let's talk again about masks and the correct way to wear them. You have no doubt seen plenty of people in public with their mask pulled down so that it only covers their mouth, leaving their nose or nostrils exposed. Dr. Frank Me George here with new research suggesting that this defeats, I guess, the point of wearing one more than you might think, Frank. Yeah, Devin, you know, while masks do protect the wearer to some degree, the primary purpose of a mask is what's called source control, limiting the amount of infectious droplet coming out of the wearer's respiratory tract, both the mouth and the nose. Here's why. Most people usually breathe through their noses, and for good reason. We smell through our noses. Our noses warm and humidify the air we breathe, and they help filter out debris and microorganisms in the air. Breathing out through the nose is also healthier. It naturally improves lung and circulatory function. It also gives your body a chance to reclaim some of the warmth and humidity that you would otherwise just exhale into the environment. Unfortunately, just like the nose is better for breathing, the nose also appears to be better at spreading COVID-19. A study published in the journal Cell mapped locations in the respiratory tract where the COVID-19 virus most quickly invades, multiplies, and spreads from. They found the cells that line the nose were significantly more likely to become infected and shed virus compared to the throat or lungs. That means every time a person exhales through their nose, they're likely generating a higher concentration of infectious aerosol than if they were simply breathing from their mouth. It also means in order to block that infectious cloud from escaping to infect other people, it's just as important to cover your nose with a mask. Now, another really interesting thought that was generated by this study addresses the question of how the SARS-CoV-2 virus even infects people's lungs to begin with. The researchers actually suggested, based on their findings, the virus doesn't get to the lungs through the blood or even by marching lower down the respiratory tract. They think it may simply jump from the lungs or from the to the lungs from the infected nasal secretions that a susceptible person aspirates or inhales. This is fascinating to me that they can drill down and figure out which part of your respiratory architecture <laughs> holds the virus. But does having more virus in the nose then have any effect on the symptoms that someone might have? Well, you know, it helps explain why so many people have a loss of smell, and uh, it also helps explain why so many people are either asymptomatic or have only minimal symptoms. If the primary site of attack is the nose, it wouldn't feel very significant until it traveled uh, down into the lungs. And this, of course, I want to remind people is only one study, but it does raise some very interesting points. That's fascinating. Yeah. All right, Frank.